If the holidays are marriage proposal season and summer is wedding season, there's no doubt a lot of planning is going on in between, like right about now. So with us today is florist Tracy Pascarella from your florist, right? And uh, some of the uh, trends in wedding flowers for this year. I gotta ask you, how much does floral fashion change from year to year? If you look back over the years, you know there was a there was a time like back in the '50s and '60s when everything was like huge. Yeah. Um, now it's a little bit smaller. Um, a, a lot of it depends on the bride's taste and style. You know, every bride has sort of a theme or a look that they're going for. Um, and some, certainly a color. Right, right, and a color. So the colors, you know, have something to do with it, and the budget has something to do with it. The good thing is there's a lot of flowers in say white, and they're all different price points. And that goes with so everything. you can so, right, so you can get a look together, um, you know, that works. This might be a bride's bouquet with some really expensive orchids in it. Then, if we had a smaller budget, we would take the bridesmaids' bouquets, make them a little smaller, which I think is current now, a, a little smaller bridesmaids' bouquet. I see. Okay. And perhaps not use the orchids, but pull out some other flowers from the bride's bouquet so that everything coordinates, but we're able to keep in a budget. Okay, and what else do you have here? Other than my boutonniere, um, by the way, thank right, you. It, oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> um, the other thing too, as far as budget goes, is it's nice to give the bouquets that you use for the ceremony a second job at the reception. Definitely, get so, some mileage out of right, them, right? So the head table, a lot of times we'll use the bride's bouquet and the bridesmaid's bouquets as the centerpiece for the head table, so you're not buying an additional centerpiece for that. Um, smaller little bouquets that you have. You can cluster a bunch of bridesmaids bouquets together, put them in a larger vase and use them, um, you know, on, on the bar at the reception. Or put, a, you know, one by the cake table, a couple by the gift table. So a lot of times there's a mantle somewhere. So you can put a few bouquets up there. So you want to give them a second job. You don't want them to just work at the ceremony, but work for you at the reception as well. And what's here over here on the far end? Um, so here I, I did this bride's bouquet and it has orange in it and then we did something a little bit s more simple for the bridesmaids. So again, we can keep in the same color scheme, but it doesn't always have to be the exact same flowers. Um, this is just a simple little Gerbera um, daisy bouquet. A lot of girls like the Gerberas, um, but they're easy and they're simple and it doesn't have to be enormous. Okay. I think that's the point. And you don't have to use all of the same flowers as long as everything um, coordinates. Mothers too. Sometimes they like the wristlets, yeah. but sometimes they like to have a little, um, little posy bouquet to hold. Okay. And so they've got their own jewelry on. They don't really want to put something else on. So this is a great thing. Now, since you're saying it doesn't have to be as big as it once was, does that mean that it's, you don't necessarily have to spend quite as much? Because I know a lot of people right now are watching who are getting ready to get married. And you know what's everybody is watching their budget. Yeah. And it, it starts off as a design thing. You know, you want to get in there, look. Um, do they want contemporary or gardeny? Um, and then it becomes a, a mathematics thing. How much do, does each stem cost? So in this bouquet, you know, we we're able to put some orchids in, but I use some tulips, which aren't as pricey. Mm -hmm. So if you want that color scheme, we can pull. You know, you, we have some roses, but then we have some little green kermits in here that aren't quite as expensive as perhaps a green hydrangea might be. So it's up to the designer to get that look and get in the budget that you need to, you know, that you need to get in. The other thing to remember is if you've got a really tight budget, watch how many bridesmaids you have. Yeah. You know, sometimes girls will come in and, and say they've got a really tight budget, but they have 10 bridesmaids. You've got to get a bouquet for every one of them. Yeah, that's a good point. So point. sometimes it's easier to keep those numbers down. Remember in your planning stages before you invite all these people to be in your wedding that you've got to have flowers for all of them. And we're just finishing up a few more seconds. So before somebody comes to see you, <laughs> what would you suggest that they think about or do to prepare for that first visit with the florist? Well, you, you want to bring some pictures of things you like. Um, for me, I don't have packages. I like to design for each bride and groom. Okay. So bring some pictures of things you like and you don't have to find your exact bouquet. You can bring a picture of a garden and say, wow, I really love this color scheme. I really like these flowers. And uh, to me, it's sort of getting to know each other, you know, getting to know them, their style, what they're looking for, and then I design it. Because I design for each individual couple, 
doesn't mean it's expensive. Right. We've got to get the look they want in the budget that they're comfortable with. So it right. takes a little work, but we get it done, and, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Tracy, much appreciated. And, of course, that's a repurpose for those reported pictures, right? Bring them in with you to the florist, too, oh, especially as spring bouquets or blossoms start coming up. Thank you, Tracy Pascarella, for coming in.